sometimes if body knows what the heart don't know and it shows things that you don't want to show like if you should keep it in or let it go Where are you right now? Tell me about the room that you're sitting in. I am in First Light Center for Performance and Creativity, which is uh, a social enterprise for First Light Friendship Center, where we're working on turning a hundred-year-old United Church into a world-class Indigenous art center. So this room is called different things depending on who you ask, really. I guess if you ask the, the church crowd... They'll call it a, the sanctuary, and then if you ask us, we call it the performance space. So it's a uh, you know it's still a lot of different things to different people. I want to go back to March fourteenth of twenty twenty, because that was <laughs> the day that you put out your record, Ease Back, and it was yeah. also the day that the first presumptive case of COVID was reported <laughs> in Newfoundland yeah. and Labrador. So. I want to know what it was like for you to put out this record and then basically to have the whole world shut down immediately afterwards. Well, it was like the day that we were supposed to put it out. So like the the release concert and stuff itself didn't happen, but we had already scheduled with their digital distributor for it to be released online that day. So it wasn't one of those things like, oh, well, let's delay it until things settle down it was like you know it was that day it was scheduled to be released so it it came out on the internet 
um, at the same time when everyone was just talking about the pandemic on the internet. So it really just kind of got put on the back burner to all the other things that were happening in the world. Everyone had so much else to worry about. So we had a really big, a lot of big plans for what we wanted to do with the record. And then it just kind of got put on an infinite hold. And now that we're in the place where we could do it again, I have a whole new collection of songs and I'm just kind of over it. But with that band, I'm a large ensemble writer primarily. So I like writing for jazz orchestra and like choirs and like big groups. And I've always been in bands with like eight or 10 people with like a horn section and backup vocals. So it's not the kind of thing that really adapts well to a pandemic. You know, you have to go play by yourself. I play the saxophone and sing. So like if I don't have like a band... I don't know what I'm doing with myself. So I've been kind of teaching myself to play guitar over the past couple of years so that I can still make music. Uh, But yeah, so the whole new collection of songs is songs that I could play with by myself or with one or two other people. And so it's been a blessing in a way because I had to step outside of my comfort zone and think about not just myself as a creator and a writer, but also as someone who has to perform the music and like be in the spotlight which I'm still not 100% comfortable with but um, I think stepping outside of our comfort zone is good for us as artists and creators so here I am I'm writing different kind of music than I would have wrote two years ago when I was making that record so it's okay you know it's good (laughs) I'm glad I made that record I'm glad I'm making the music that I'm making now I think everybody has had to bend over backwards and reinvent themselves to survive the past couple of years so i'm just one person just like everyone else trying to muddle through you're going to play another song for us what's the what's the second one that you're going to play the second song is called home to me and it's kind of about um making connections with people through the pandemic and like through lockdowns and making new friendships and bonding with people in new ways and then not wanting that to end when the pandemic is over. Uh, So we're going to get Maria back up here, and this is Home to Me. When they open up the floodgates to the nets out on the town, and there's two upon that lighting board and three upon that sound, will you go out and give her like it's 1999? All full of piss and vigor after far too long inside When they're dusting off those disco balls and shining up their shoes And the doctors say that it's okay to dance away your blues Will you be rubbing elbows like it's April in Paris? Go down with the moon and hop the red eye home to me Will you be home to me? send you to the site with your pockets full and belly full and thriving out of spite will you wait for the weekend then put on your Sunday best just up to get sauced and watch the sunrise from the deck from the deck when they open up Havana and you're flying from the snow and you're dancing on verandas heel to heel and nose to nose Will you go digging deep to find what's missing and then see That though you have it all, there's somewhere else you'd rather be in the A1C Home to me Home to me Home to me me. Is that where you're gonna be When you're free to go and how you please So that's home to me, Nat, um, a song connected to the pandemic. Um, but I want to know how 
the pandemic has been for you um, sort of more personally, I guess? I mean, you have three kids at home. What's it been mm -hmm. like for you during the pandemic with all the tumult and, and change that has brought for everybody? Honestly, this is going to sound really odd, but it's been great. <laughs> I think before the pandemic, my partner and I are both like really busy people. So um, like we both work full time and it's like he's really in a sport to like coaches basketball and plays basketball and plays music too. And then I have all these different music projects on the go and we have three kids. So life is just like really, really hectic. So when everything slowed down and stopped and we were all home all the time, we really had to evaluate how we've been living, you know? And we kind of realized that we were doing too much. We, were, we learned a lot, actually. And so we, we kind of made an active decision. It's like, when we're able, we're going to do less stuff all the time. And we're going to play board games. And we're going to watch The Simpsons with the kids. And we're going to play music with them and um, spend less time being like, go, go, go. Like, we need to spend some time doing nothing. And we also realized that we didn't like our house. We didn't like where we were living. And we had bought our house. We were like living in the Goulds. And we were like, we want to live in town. We want to be close to our friends. We want to be in the city. So we sold our house and we moved to town. And also our oldest kid has a ADHD and some other challenges. And so just being able to spend that quality time with him and like figuring out how to like, what's the best plan for him going forward? Like, he just turned 14 yesterday. So it's kind of like some formative year stuff happening. And it's like, you know, we need to spend some quality time figuring out, like, what works for you and what doesn't, you know? And so we spent some real time, like, evaluating our our life and, like, how we live it and how to serve each other better. And it's like, at least once every couple of days, we're like, yeah, this was a good choice. Like, we're so glad we moved downtown. Like, we're so glad... We switched to these schools. We're so glad I don't do that project anymore. That wasn't even that fulfilling, you know? So we made a lot of really big changes. And I think that full stop is sometimes what you need to really evaluate what's working for you and what's not as a family. So we're actually pretty, we're pretty grateful. We're good. That's fantastic. It gave you that opportunity, I guess, to really stop and slow down and... Like you say, you take stock of things and you figure out what's important and what's stressing you out more than it needs to and, and what you really want to hang on to and what you can let go of. Yeah, and you kind of had to because, well, we lost childcare, So then a lot of things were like, okay, well, this is going to go virtual, but we're still going to do it. And we're like, but I have three kids home with me and the youngest of whom is four. So he was two and all of this like kind of went down. And uh, he's not going to let me host a two-hour songwriting virtual thing you know what I mean like I just can't and so, so while a lot of other artists were like pivoting and stuff like parents who lost all activities for their kids really didn't have much opportunity so you had to be a lot more picky about what you did and it wasn't even just that I didn't have anyone to care for them you're also concerned about them because they can't play with their friends they can't go to school they can't take part in the activities that they like. So you feel concerned about your own kid's mental health too. So it's like you need to dedicate time to caring for them in a different way to make sure that they kind of come out on the other side of this, still knowing how to interact with people and still like knowing how how they fit in their community, you know? And that was a, a it's a job, you know? It's time consuming and it takes a lot of your heart and like it's hard work. And so it was really important for us to carve out that time. So yeah, we had to let a lot of things go. And some things, like, I'm sad that I had to let them go. But then when I look at my work-life balance, I think it's a lot better. So I do have time to do things like learn how to play guitar, you know? And my teenager is, like, learning how to play a bass so, like, we can have jams. And it's like, you know, I need, we need that as people. We need to, like, learn and grow. And we need to connect with the people we love more so than we need to take on every single project and be, like, the most productive person and put out the most content and win the most awards and make the most money. Like, it's actually not that important. You kind of realize when it all gets taken away. Like, what really matters is, are you fulfilled as a person? Do you feel connected to the people that are around you? Do you feel supported and loved? Like, do you feel like there's a place for you to grow? As a person, like, are you learning things, you know? So, like, that's what really matters if you're talking about enjoying your life. 
So I think, yeah, it's been a really good opportunity 